Hello and welcome to the Stronghold Digital Mining Daily Update. Today is Thursday, January 4th, 2024. My name's Steven Zeiner. It's good to see you again. So I was taking a look at the, uh, you know, basically the amended, the second amended uh, Whitehawk credit agreement, right? There, there was like a, an initial revision in late 2022, and then uh, there was a second revision in very early 2023. So the current Whitehawk credit agreement is really important, right? Because our principal piece of debt that continues to be outstanding um, is held by uh, Whitehawk Finance, right? Uh, Stronghold Digital Mining has a very collaborative and positive uh, working relationship with Whitehawk, and um, I think that's a really good thing. I was checking this credit agreement this revised credit agreement to see if there was any evidence to suggest that Whitehawk would have any qualms with Stronghold Digital Mining uh, doing at-the-market offerings, doing private placements, or otherwise engaging in financial mechanisms through which money could be raised uh, in the equity markets. And although I'm not quite done digging through all the details, I don't see any evidence to suggest that Whitehawk has a problem with Stronghold Digital Mining issuing equity uh, to raise money to fund the business. What does that mean? So it means two things. Uh, most important, perhaps, what it means is that as long as Stronghold Digital Mining continues to make interest payments on this debt, and as long as Stronghold Digital Mining uh, begins making uh, principal payments, right, uh, towards the middle of this year, I don't really think Whitehawk cares where the money comes from, which logically kind of makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, you'll notice if you were to look at the uh, amended credit agreement, right, the one that took place in early 2023, uh, there was no... Uh, I, there was no dilution as part of having that agreement put into place. Okay, Whitehawk did not want any equity, which kind of makes sense because ultimately, right, from the perspective of Whitehawk, it's like, hey, we want to get our interest payments and we eventually do want to get our principal paid back. We're not really that interested in equity. We just want to get the interest payments and the principal paid back. And the thing is, right, by behaving as a partner and not forcing a bankruptcy, Whitehawk is definitely, I think, on track to make tremendous amounts of money, uh, to continue to make tremendous amounts of money from Stronghold Digital Mining because we've continued to make interest payments. And those interest payments have added up. I mean, it's, it's a fair amount of money uh, that's being paid in interest. Now, this means that I think the conversation changes a little bit because whereas before a lot of these uh, credit arrangements were arrived at, not just with Whitehawk, but with uh, a variety of other lenders, right? Before that process took place, which really commenced in earnest in like August of 2022, until that took place, there was an unknown risk of actual bankruptcy, right? Like you didn't really know. Would a lender say, you know what? We're not going to play games here. You're going to go into bankruptcy and we'll take our chances at recovering whatever we can recover uh, through the bankruptcy process, right? That was definitely a risk. Now, while it's true that sometimes, hey, you know, I know I certainly use, you know, phraseology like bankruptcy. I, th I think I'm using it more as a placeholder. Um, for what I think is probably best described as not really bankruptcy, but maybe, you know, death by dilution. And let me explain what I mean by that. Because remember, when I said at the outset, right, that the fact that Whitehawk doesn't seem to really mind or care if Stronghold Digital Mining issues endless amounts of equity, it meant two things, right? Well, so we discussed what the first thing meant, which was that, hey, you know, uh, from Whitehawk's perspective, great. They collect, they continue to collect interest. They're going to get their principal paid back. Um, it also means that Stronghold can continue to issue equity as needed to fund the business. But the second thing that means, though, is that shareholders, 
right? Those of us who are co-owners of the business, you know, we are in, I think, a little bit more of an unusual position. And let me explain what I mean by that. So we are sort of in a race here, right? To see if this business, if this company can generate enough actual, um, you know, let's phrase it this way. Can we generate enough enterprise value, okay, prior to uh, what remains of our ownership interest in this business uh, being diluted uh, further and further and further, right? We can be a billion dollar business, right? We can have a market cap of a billion dollars, but if we have a billion shares outstanding, I think if my math is right, our stock price would be a buck a share. Not exactly the most inspiring stock price uh, for most of us, right? So I think where this leaves us is with a better understanding of what the reality might look like. I don't know that we actually ever go bankrupt. As long as capital markets are open to at-the-market offerings, as long as uh, there are institutional investors that are willing to uh, you know, pay uh, good money for shares of uh, this company, there's going to be a funding mechanism uh, that exists that will help Stronghold Digital Mining avoid bankruptcy. So the real danger and risk that I believe uh, shareholders such as uh, me and you, you and me, um, face at this juncture uh, is really more the issue of dilution. Now, I think it's important and fair and appropriate to point out that members of this management team own a lot of stock in Stronghold Digital Mining. I don't think the intent on the part of management is to dilute the business into oblivion, okay? Uh, one might perhaps make that argument if like management had no meaningful ownership stake in the company, they were deriving the you know vast majority of their compensation uh, from just a straight salary. I mean, I, you know, look, there's a lot of ways to look at that. I don't intuitively sense that the goal is for there to be a stronghold digital mining that yes, is still in business, uh, but has a billion, you know, or whatever, 500 million shares outstanding. And you've got, you know, shareholders that have, you know, essentially bled to death, you know, so the company's alive, but it's, it's almost like a zombie entity with uh, just so much stock out there that, uh, you know, there's really just no equity value to, to really speak of, if, if that makes sense. So I think we need to be mindful of this. And I think this is especially true in the context of, you know, a private placement that took place recently um, and at the, at the market, you know, sort of like offering mechanism that continues to be in place. I mean, uh, you know, I, what if the company were to equitize the remaining portion of debts that's out there? And no, I don't mean that, you know, Whitehawk would suddenly accept, you know, stock in Stronghold Digital Mining in exchange for, you know, debt extinguishment. But what if the company simply just sold another, you know, <laughs> 5 million shares, right, at $10 a share, let's say, that's about $50 million. That kind of covers the overwhelming majority of the principal amount of debt uh, that's owed to Whitehawk, right? Um, what would that look like? Uh, I, again, I'm not sure that I'm uh, very much in favor of that, right? Uh, but I'm just pointing out that I think we need to, to move beyond this, this, this fear of bankruptcy, which I think is definitely behind us. And I think we need to just be a little bit more collectively mindful. And let's have a conversation about this. I'm not saying I have all the answers as it relates to dilution. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts as well. But I do think we need to be mindful of uh, the, you know, like a leaky boat that, uh, you know, uh, potentially leads to a situation where, um, you know, we don't necessarily go bankrupt, but, but we find ourselves, uh, you know, kind of diluted into uh, oblivion. Um, and I'm not suggesting that that's the intent or, or the game plan or the goal, but it's it's sort of like a risk, I think, that's out there. What are your thoughts? 
Um, I know that you, like me, are very positive, right, on this company and that we believe, right, in the expertise and in the judgment of management. And I know that we have a belief in the uh, mission, right, and the purpose of this business, at least I do. So, you know, I, I, I wonder if we're going to be able to see our revenue inputs exceed our expense outputs sooner rather than later. Um, the numbers are looking pretty good, but you know, we're going to have to start seeing that so that ideally we can fund any additional uh, growth that needs to take place, be it uh, in the form of buying more big, you know, Bitcoin mining machines or alternatively or sim you know, simultaneously maybe, um, hey, we're buying more Bitcoin mining machines, but we're also going to invest money in, you know, Carbolith direct air capture uh, devices, right, which will help push down the cost of our power. And the more uh, efficient Bitcoin mining machines, by contrast, will also consume less power, thus giving us more uh, gross margin, or at least that would be the intent. So I do agree. Yeah, that, I mean, that is ostensibly a good thing, right? If we can derive more gross margin going into the halving, going into what could potentially be a bull run in the price of Bitcoin, you know, these are all very, very positive things. But can these positive things happen relatively soon enough so that we don't find ourselves continually having to uh, sell shares to stay alive, but in turn, you know, kind of like having a scenario where we're slowly but surely, you know, like losing the lifeblood of our holdings of this business, um, you know, absent you continually, you know, dollar cost average down, which again can become very exhausting in and of itself right? Uh, some of you know what I'm, I'm talking about. So, uh, hey, let's stay positive, but let's be thoughtful and let's have a conversation about this. Do you agree in principle that the real risk now isn't so much bankruptcy? What, I mean, White Hawk's going to force a bankruptcy? Why would they, right? As long as they keep getting their interest payments, as long as they continue to get their, uh, you know, principal payments once that begins in earnest later this year, hey, who cares where the money comes from as long as the money's there to make those payments. See what I mean? Um, so what do you think? Is dilution the true risk at this juncture? Whereas maybe in the past it was more, you know, an actual bankruptcy. Are we potentially facing, uh, you know, fatal levels of dilution uh, if our revenue inputs don't really start meaningfully accelerating, which by the way, they have been, they have been, but I'm just saying, is that the real risk? fatal dilution, not so much bankruptcy. I am interested in hearing your thoughts. Okay, let's be positive. Let's uh, stay great, be great, and we'll see each other again tomorrow.